Hello friends. Launching of satellites into space is one of humankind's crowning achievement. Starting from launching a 40 kilogram satellite to launching 104 satellites in various orbits, ISRO has come a long way in its journey. Have you ever wondered how a launch vehicle could send a satellite to a specific orbit accurately without any human assistance? What exactly is the intelligence of the launch vehicle? Let us know more about avionic systems which help the launch vehicle to travel on its own. Before understanding about avionics, let us familiarize with basic electronics. An electronic circuit is a combination of electronic components and conductive wires interconnected in a way as to achieve an outcome, generally to obtain a certain value of voltage or current. We can achieve any required function by designing an electronic circuit. Electronic items that we use in our day-to-day -day life like TV, mobile phone, fridge, etc. are few examples. Electronic components can be classified into two. Active components and passive components. Active components depend on an external power source to function on its own. Examples are transistors and integrated circuits. Passive components do not require external power source to function. Examples are the familiar resistors, capacitors, inductors, and diodes. In an electronic circuit, active components and passive components are equally important to function. As we have now familiarized with electronics, let us learn about avionics. Aviation electronics is shortened and called as avionics. Avionics means the integration of electrical, electronic, electromechanical and software systems to perform launch vehicle functions. All subjects that come under electronics and electrical category is utilized in avionics. For example, VLSI, very large scale integration that deals with the fabrication of integrated circuits and related components, signal processing systems which process the incoming signals and convert to usable signals, embedded system which concerns with the hardware and software of small computers, sensor and instrumentation system which measures changes in the sensed inputs, communication system which does data communication from one point to another point, power systems which powers all the above said systems. All are equally important in avionic systems. Avionic systems are classified based on its function as ground systems and onboard systems. Ground systems are those which are used for launching of satellites and its related functionalities. Onboard systems perform its function during the course of the rocket. Ground system consists of three subsystems. One, pre-launch checkout systems which evaluate the performance of a rocket before launch. Two, checkout systems for testing of vehicle systems which is used in the testing of subsystem of rocket at the time of manufacturing, ground control and communication systems which is required for launching and controlling the satellites. Now let us see about onboard systems. The important ones are navigation guidance and control system, telemetry systems which provide functional parameters of a rocket before and after launch, to the ground system, telecommand system which is used to provide commands to distract the rocket from the ground, power system to power all the above systems, control actuation system which is called the steering of the rocket. Let us learn more about each. First, the NGC system, navigation guidance and control system. When we want to go from one place to another, we need to know our current position. For example, many of you who have used apps like Google Maps know that first it need to find our current location. 
The system that provides the current location of a rocket is called navigation system. The next task is to find a suitable path for the rocket to reach the desired orbit. Guidance system does this job. The automatic feature that takes the rocket to the desired orbit through the path that guidance system show is called autopilot. Autopilot is equivalent to a human pilot in an aeroplane. From this, you can imagine the complications with which autopilot functions without human intervention. Control actuation systems are the driving systems that steers a vehicle in the desired way as the autopilot commands. For a successful launch, all these systems should function accurately. If we draw the navigation guidance and control system that we now familiarized as a functional system, we will get what is shown in the picture. Navigation system is the one that acts as the eye of the rocket and provides the data on the current position. Using this information, guidance system function. The autopilot functions based on the desired path obtained from the guidance system. Control system steers the rocket in the desired path from the instructions received from autopilot. Control actuation systems are thus called the muscle of the rocket since it turns the rocket in a specified manner. Navigation guidance and control systems are functioned using three computers in a launch vehicle. Navigation computer for navigation systems, guidance computer for guidance and control, control electronics computer for control actuation systems. Using the function of these three computers, the navigation guidance and control of a launch vehicle is made into a reality. The driving system of a launch vehicle is called control actuation system and they are classified into two. Actuation system that turns the rocket using electrical power are called electromechanical actuation system and those that turn the rocket due to the pressure of a fluid are called electrohydraulic actuation systems. The choice between these actuation systems are made based on the size of the rocket stages and the speed with which it is to be turned. Now let us have a brief overview of RF systems used in launch vehicles. You must have wondered how a rocket communicates to ground once it lifts off from the launch pad. It seems on its way forward the rocket breaks all its connections to ground. But it's not so. Though all physical connections are broken, we still communicate with the rocket continuously through wireless means. For that, we use high frequency radio waves. In our universe, different types of waves are present as depicted in the electromagnetic spectrum. As you very well know, microwaves, visible light, X-rays and radio waves play a very important role in our day-to-day -day activities. The most spectacular example is mobile communication. In our rocket communication, we are interested mainly in radio waves and microwaves. They travel at the speed of light and do not require a medium to propagate like sound waves do. RF systems which form a part of the vehicle avionics utilize the range of frequencies from 400 megahertz to 6 gigahertz in the electromagnetic spectrum. Let us see what are the basic building blocks required for RF communication. There should be a transmitter which generates the radio waves an antenna to radiate it and a suitable receiver with an antenna to capture the radio waves of interest. The main areas where radio waves are used in a launch vehicle is to carry out telemetry, tracking and telecommand functions. Telemetry system plays a vital role in assessing the performance of the vehicle during launch. Sensors are located in all critical points of a rocket. As the fingerprint sensor on our mobile detects our unique fingerprint, 
the vitals of the rocket including temperature pressure fuel level etc are measured by respective sensors amplified modulated and sent through s band telemetry transmitters to radar location at different ground stations on earth s band transmitter on board the rocket works in the s band frequency range of 2.2 to 2.3 gigahertz these signals are received by radar and converted to information which is easily understandable and can be displayed a gslv has four chains of telemetry transmitters while pslv and gslv mark 3 has two each first we should know whether the rocket is following its predetermined path we get this information from the tracking system let us see the function of a tracking system signals uplinked from the radar will hit the rocket body and then come back to radar from where we can measure the slant range and instantaneous vehicle position this method is called the skin mode of tracking the simple formula for finding the range is given here r is the slant range tr is the round trip delay and c is the velocity of light as the distance of the rocket from the radar keeps on increasing the level of the signal reflected from the vehicle body keeps on diminishing to overcome this we keep transponders on board the rocket from the interrogation and reply between the radar and transponder we can find the instantaneous position of the vehicle and thereby confirm whether it follows the predetermined launch corridor tracking system comprises of four c band radars located on ground and two c band transponders located on board the total system works in the c band frequency range of 5.4 to 5.9 gigahertz in case the vehicle deviates from the intended flight path what do we do we will immediately restrict the rocket into small pieces this is to ensure that no harm should occur to any life or property moreover we also get information regarding where the restricted pieces will land from the tracking system the data from tracking is used by the range safety officer to decide whether the vehicle should continue its journey or it is to be terminated based on this respective commands are transmitted from the ground station on safe continuation or destruction of flight these functions are done by the telecommand system the telecommand stations at ground send encrypted commands which are received demodulated and decoded by the telecommand receiver and decoder present on board the rocket the decoded commands are executed by the command execution unit which in turn activate the pyros located throughout the vehicle body there are two chains for the telecommand system to take care of redundancy in short the telemetry tracking and telecommand system is the link between vehicle and ground after the lift off we now discussed about the telemetry and telecommand systems another important electronic systems in our present day launch vehicles is the on board video imaging system the aim of video imaging system is to capture and observe the important events that happen at different stages of the rocket launch in real time satellite separation stage separation engine ignition events are observed and analyzed in real time during the launch the images you see here were obtained in real time during the rocket launches by video imaging systems on board these images are then used to confirm the occurrence of events and ensure nominal performance of the launch the systems used in rocket launches are produced with extreme care ensuring reliability 
to ensure the quality of the systems used in launch vehicle. Inspections are carried out at every stage in production. In avionic system, the inspection and screening starts at a component level. The screened and qualified components are used to design electronic circuits which form a package. The package carries out the desired functionality. To ensure that this package carries out the required function, various qualification procedures are used. Many such packages used to carry out different functionalities in a launch vehicle are integrated and mission simulations are carried out to make sure that all the packages are working together to achieve the functionality. After mission simulations, the different packages are placed onto the launch vehicle. The packages are monitored until the liftoff to ensure nominal performance of the system. Every package used in a system undergoes this series of inspection, qualification and rigorous testing throughout its production and integration onto the launch vehicle. The quality of every system used in the launch vehicle is not only ensured by the components or the rugged design of the system, but also by the test and evaluation that are carried out at different stages of its production. ISRO guidelines make sure that every system undergoes all the critical qualification procedures before it is accepted for a launch or flight. ISRO's success in rocket launches lies in adhering to the quality guidelines. Let us watch a video of a test that was carried out on the launch vehicle control actuation system. Any package used in launch vehicle system undergoes a series of tests and evaluation before the rocket is launched. The first in the series is the phase zero testing to evaluate the performance at package level before integration. The tested package is then integrated with the respective sub-assembly or stage. This testing is called phase one. All avionic sub-assemblies are then electrically integrated to carry out phase 2 testing. The integrated vehicle at launch pad then undergoes testing and performance checks known as the phase 3 testing. The performance during phase 3 testing are evaluated to authorize the launch. Before launch during the countdown, Phase 4 of the testing series is carried out. We have functioning avionic systems for our present day launch vehicles. Then what are the challenges for the future mines? Present day electronic systems used in our launch vehicles are huge and heavier. We aim for lighter miniaturized electronics in the future. From electronics components like ASIC, SOCs, SMD packaging styles and flux PCBs to packages and to the systems used in rockets, miniaturization has become an important design philosophy. India as a country 
aims for self-reliance in electronics industry. We have attained self-reliance in resources and technology for system development to design, develop and produce highly reliable electronic system which stands one among us the best in the world has become our aim for the avionics sector. Only then shall we achieve the dream of Atmanar Bhar Bharat. India is targeting to be a super techno power by the next decade. Each and every one of us will be a part of this goal. What do we do to achieve this goal? There is no limits to what you can dream or achieve. You just have to be sincere and honest about what you do. I would like to conclude this module with the motivational words of Swami Vivekananda who said, Arise, awake and sleep not until your dreams are achieved. Thank you.